The final installment of our mini-series on how money is made will discuss central bank's digital money, the most extreme and less type of money source. Welcome back to Cryptique, a channel that gives critical evaluation or analysis especially in dealing with crypto. Everything regarding money, finance, investing, cryptocurrency and blockchain related topics including ICOs, NFTs and yield farming. Quantitative easing, or also known as QE, is a new type of money developed by the Bank of Japan in 1989. During the 2008 financial crisis in America, the Federal Reserve popularized it. QE is when a central bank prints money to lend to the banking industry, huge enterprises, and most recently, common citizens. It's a method of pumping money into the economy during the times of extraordinary mishaps such as the 2008 financial crisis. As a result, the central bank's balance sheets went out of hand in order to keep the economy afloat for a little longer. The $700 billion bailout of QE in 2008 amid the crisis was the first time it was performed outside of Japan. It was highly controversial. According to President Bush at that time, bailing out Wall Street would be the only way to preserve Main Street. That was the president's justification of one of the country's largest proposed financial rescue plans. This idea of the president would enable the treasury to purchase up to $700 billion in problematic loans, including many of the subprime mortgages. However, those poor debts are eventually passed on to the American public purse. The legal ceiling on the national debt will have to be raised from $10.6 trillion to $11.3 trillion by Congress. It was assumed that this was a one-time emergency situation. However, the Federal Reserve failed to alter this trend over the next decade. To give an insight on how momentous this was, the total amount which the United States of America earned in debt was less than a trillion dollars from its founding in 1776 to 2008. By the year 2014, the figure had risen to four trillion dollars. In the three months since the COVID outbreak began, three trillion dollars have been added. Now, the Federal Reserve of the United States is printing thousands of billions of dollars in a matter of days. As time goes on, it appears to have less of an impact. We put a lot of faith in the printing press in the United States. The United States continued to be in a reserve currency position. However, it is fake money. Still our fake money. Everything is dependent on faith. How long can this be maintained at this rate? The debate then shifts to the taxpayer who is enraged to the point of insanity. Let me clarify something. The government can bail out private banks on a regular basis, and they can print money using quantitative easing. Why do we have to pay taxes in the first place? In this country, they are the seeds of societal upheaval. One can only get themselves out of a hole, especially when you're going out of the middle class. All of this is made possible by the Federal Reserve's monetization of U.S. debt. So, how do the system central banks utilize their fake money to purchase the corresponding quantity of government bonds? They do it by borrowing money from the bond market, which operates to lend money to businesses and governments. Despite the fact that the stock market receives more attention, the bond market is actually larger. So, what exactly is a bond? It's effectively just like a debt, but it's supplied by the government or a corporation. Central banks may manufacture money to acquire these bonds as they have no savings. So, here's the big question. Does a central bank have the ability to be bankrupt? From a report published by the European Central Bank in the year of 2016, because of their power to make more money, central banks are shielded from insolvency. If 
you thought that this is a little unfair, there's even more to it. In our current predicament, governments are caught in a difficult situation. They're unable to raise money without raising taxes, but they owe trillions to the central banks. The goal is that the borrowed funds will help jumpstart the economy. However, something else is going on. Central banks can wind up holding a large portion of the world's assets if they buy bonds issued by governments or corporations. The balance sheet of the Japanese central bank, for example, is larger than the country's whole GDP. They own 80% of the stock market in their country. That's correct. Their stock market's main shareholder is the Bank of Japan. Another example, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Google are among the $90 billion worth of American stocks owned by the Swiss Central Bank. I really had a hard time digesting that this was legal when I first read about it a couple of years ago. As a result, these central banks are inventing money out of thin air. They don't have the ability to be bankrupt either, but they're still purchasing actual assets. So, if you think this video has clarified some things for you, please consider liking it and clicking that bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you might want to consider subscribing to our channel. It'll really help us out. Back to our video. Something is incorrect here. Even a youngster can sense it. It turns out that making money out of thin air and purchasing assets have certain drawbacks. Stock markets are detached from reality when discussed with these types of central bank manipulations. The stock market used to represent the economy during the 20th century. However, this has recently been entirely out of whack. The United States stock market has grown to about double the size of the entire country's GDP, which defies logic. The main reason that 13 million individuals in the U.S. lost their jobs in April 2020 was due to central bank involvement, despite having the stock market produce its most fruitful month since the year of 1987. The central bank produced trillions of dollars and delivered them to banks and hedge funds at near zero interest rates. This money went directly to the stock market, with no aid for the real economy. We previously explored how money printing causes inflation. So how come we haven't seen it yet? We, on the other hand, have. Inflation has been evident with house rates and stock markets around the world. The newly produced money is invested in all of these assets, driving increasing prices. As a result, a small number of people who possess enormous amounts of stocks become ridiculously rich. While the actual economy stagnates, the rich become wealthier and the poor get poorer. The wealth disparity can be felt and seen by many people. However, they don't know where it's originating from. I'll present it to you in three graphs. The stock market has been linked to the riches of society's elite class since the 1980s. Once the economy was on life support in 2008, the stock market has been attached to the Federal Reserve since. The greater they print, the higher the stock market rises and they grow wealthier. Their net worth has increased by 400% since 1980. The earliest recipients of newly produced money enjoy greater living standards when central banks print money. This comes at the expense of others who will receive the money later after inflation has set in. One effect is the name given to this phenomenon. Experts believe that if the wealthy begin to sell their stocks and real estate in order to buy other assets, the money velocity or the pace at which money transfers places in the economy will begin to increase. That is when we will begin to see actual inflation in the economy. There's a lot more to this, but I'll keep it at that for now. To summarize, central banks do not have any savings. 
They can't go bankrupt, but they can buy government bonds and create a limitless quantity of money. A bond is a financial instrument that exchanges money for the assurance that the government will repay it with interest in the future. Current and future residents of a country must eventually repay this money, either through taxation or inflation. Acquired a lot of knowledge from this? Check out our other relevant videos from our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video to any friends or family members who might find it useful. Until next time!